Sachas Ksubis Davav is all about the Gemara's question that the Gemara just finished asking as to whether or not it's permitted to do a first Bia on Shabbos. We saw that there are two potentially surim. There's the blood that's being drawn. It could be a Iser of drawing blood on Shabbos. And the second one was that it's fashioning an opening by creating a functional um, opening for the woman. Now... The Gemara is going to go through a couple of opinions, and the Gemara will go through a few m- proofs. So first of all, the Gemara says that there's a machokis as to how we rule halacha lemaisa between Rav and Shmuel, and there's a difference of opinion who says what. According to Rav's yeshiva, Rav said it's mutter and Shmuel said it's aser. According to Naharda, which is where Shmuel was the Rav, Shmuel said it's mutter and Rav said it's aser. Gemara says the simon to re- Remember, what's what is that each town said that their Rebbe is the one who said that it's Mutter. And other town says that it's Usr. So now the Gemara has a few questions. First of all, the Gemara says, is it possible for anybody to hold it? Rav holds that it's Mutter. I have a proof that Rav says that it's Usr. Because Rav said that you're not allowed to squeeze a rag in the hole of a barrel of wine in order to stuff up the hole because you're also going to be squeezing wine out of the rag. You'll be doing an Easter schita. Even though that's not what you intend, you'll be violating an Easter. Therefore, uh, Rav clearly holds that a Dovashin Meskav, and a Malach that you're doing on Shabbos, which you don't intend to do, you're just intending to stop the hole, not intending to squeeze, that's Usr anyway. So obviously Rav holds Dovashin Meskav is Usr, and one of the reasons we gave that the first Bia on Shabbos should be mutter is because whatever you're doing, it's Aina Miskavan. Whichever Malacha you're doing is Aina Miskavan. But Rav obviously holds that Aina Miskavan is not a heter. So the Gemara says it's not a kasha. Uh, here, it's not a psigresha. Psigresha means that it's for sure going to happen. You can't say that it's Aina Miskavan if it's for sure going to happen. In the case of the squeezing rag there, it's for sure going to squeeze. So there's no heter of Aina Miskavan. Here, it's not for sure going to happen. The Gemara will explain later at the end of the daf why the Isser the malacha is not going to happen for sure by the first bia. So the Gemara says, okay, you got out of that one, but we have quotes where Rav clearly holds like Rav Yehuda who holds Aina Miskavan as Aser, and Shmuel clearly holds like Rav Shimon who holds Aina Miskavan as Mutter. This is different versions of how we have this Masora. Um, either it's Bayan Rava who said um, it's Rav uh, Bar Ashi in the name of Rav, or it's Rav Hanan Bar Ami in the name of Shmuel, or it's possibly uh, there's a quote of Rav Chiyah Bar Avin who said each of them over with any other names. Either way, we have clear psak. Rav definitely holds that Ana Miskavin is also like a Behuda. Shmuel holds it's Mutter. So how could Shmuel, how could Rav's town say otherwise? How could Rav say, how could Rav's yeshiva say that Rav is one who is Matir? So Mur says, because we're using one of the other Heterim. We're not using the Heter of Miskavin. We're using one of the other Heterim. Which one? The Heter of Mikalkel. So we'd seen two versions of the question. If the if the reason if the heter which we were asking about was then maybe the blood being drawn out is not an iser because it's considered to be liquid it's not absorbed and considered to be liquid so um, the only potential iser was that you're making an opening so that opening is mekalkel it's bad for the woman to have the opening there's greater value on a b'sula than on a ba'ula and therefore it's a kilkel it's a destruction causes a loss. Anything which causes a loss is not a malach on Shabbos, and therefore it's not usr. According to the other version, that the isr was the blood that's being drawn, the, it's the isr of Chabura, so then the, the shayla was, is Chabura usr even if it's makakal? Generally, Chabura is a makakal. You Usually when you hurt someone, it's a kilkel to them. So the question was, is Chabura that's makakal, is that an isr? And Rabbi Huda holds that that's mutter. So Rav would be holding like that opinion of Rabbi Huda also, like we said, he holds like Rabbi Huda and Ani Miskavin. He holds like Rabbi Huda there also that that is mutter and that's not an iser. And that's why Rav here, according to this version, according to his yeshiva, would hold that it is mutter to do the first bia on Shabbos. All right now the Gemara has two proofs from uh, Bryce and a Mishnah to show that it really is. Mutter to do the bia on Shabbos. So the first is concerning the halacha of the dam besulim, whether it's matami to masnida. The halacha is when a woman sees a menstrual flow, it's matami to masnida. The blood that comes from the hymenal bleeding of the uh, first bia of a besula, that is not matami. The problem is, is you don't necessarily know if there is menstrual blood there as well. You see, a woman is bleeding and you can't possibly be sure which one it is. So what we do is, 
we try to have a when we can have a reasonable assumption that the blood is from the high metal bleeding we don't have to assume that there's them need them mixed in there so when is that so it depends on the age of the woman if she's young enough that she's never she hasn't reached the she has not reached the age where she should begin having dam nida yet at all so then the law has as follows the machok is betol beis shamai then beis shamai says she can have four beers on four nights she can have four full nights even more than four beers four nights from the wedding we will assume that this is all blood from the hymen and not from the dam nida. Beis Hillel says, until the wound created by the first Bia is healed, until she has a real toughness without any pain, without any blood, we're going to assume that it's all dam besula. Now, what happens if she is old enough to have seen dam nida? She hasn't seen any dam nida yet, but she is of age. So here we have to be stricter. It's more likely that there's dam besula mixed in. So here, Beis Shammai says, you give her just one night. Any number of beers, but just one at night. And Basil says she gets four nights. And the way Basil phrases it is she gets until Matzah Shabbos four nights. So she gets married on a Wednesday. She has Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, and Matzah Shabbos. So you see clearly that he can do the beer on Friday night. That is permitted. So that is that should be a clear proof that a beer, which is still growing blood, is permitted on a Friday night. So the Gemara says, no, Rava explains, Rava says, no, it means three nights, not counting Shabbos, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Matzah Shabbos. So the Gemara says, four nights. It says Matzah Shabbos, and it also says four nights. The way you're saying is only three nights. So the Gemara says, okay, different answer. We're talking about where he already did the Bia, and he did a full break of the Sulim, and there's no problem of Dam Sulim anymore, and he's still allowed to. The Chiddush is that even though it's still blood, you don't have to assume that it is... Uh, Dam Nida could still be Dam Sulim for four nights. Says the Gemara, uh, that can't be, because that would be what, what would be the Chiddush in saying four nights till Matzah Shabbos. Obviously trying to point something out here. It seems like we're trying to point out that you're allowed to do that.
So says Rava, this is a good proof. What must we say? That it's a machokis tanaim. And there's another tanaim that says that you can't. And the question is, who do we pass in? That's the whole thing. Where do you see this? Well, the Mark quotes the answer. It shows that there is a machokis tanaim. One says, um, if he didn't say, if he didn't do the beer the first night, then he doesn't have to say Shema the second night. If he didn't do it the second night, he doesn't have to say Shema the third night. You have a different one that says the first night and the second night you get off Shema, the third night, which is Friday night, you don't get off Shema. So this one clearly shows Machokis must be based on whether or not he's allowed to do the Bia on a Friday night. Now, Abaye disagrees. Abaye is going to give the first answer and says that it was because of his heart. Abaye says there it's also because of upsetness. It's the upsetness that does not apply Friday night. That is the shot in one who says um, the, the actual machokis between them is is, is is he allowed to do that? Yeah. Is is upsetness enough of an excuse to not do uh, shema? Is the fact that you're just upset? Is that a reason, or do we say upsetness doesn't get you out of shema? It has to be that you're actually being Isaac in a dvar mitzvah here. All right, now the Gemara says further, we have another machlokis tanaim. Because we have a Bryce that says, somebody who marries a b'sula should not do the first beyond Shabbos. Tanakama, Chachamim say, you're allowed to. So who's this Chachamim? Who says you're allowed to? So the Gemara quotes Rabbah, says, this is Rabbi Shimon, because it's in Miskavan. Rabbi Shimon holds that a malacha in Miskavan is mutter. He's not intending to do the malacha here. So it's not usher to do the first beyond. So now the Gemara asks that it should be a psik ratio. The Chabura, or the... Uh, making of the opening should be a psikresha, should have for sure. So the Gemara says, no, it's not every time that a first bia is done will it cause damsun. There's a way of doing it that doesn't cause it. a way to enter at an angle or sideways or or around that one can avoid tearing the psalm. And since that can be done, therefore it's not a psikresha. Now the Gemara calls that Shmuel's way. Shmuel was able to do the hatoya. Um, so the Gemara says, I don't understand. If he's not necessarily going to break the psulim, so what's he all upset about? What is this tarud that he has? The Gemara answers, tarud is somebody who doesn't know, somebody who's not familiar with this procedure, and he doesn't know how to do it. So the Gemara says, so then you mean, you're going you to say someone who knows has to say Shema, and someone who doesn't know does not have to say Shema, you have different halachos. Most of the majority of people know how to do it, and therefore... Seemingly, they would have to say Shema. The question as to whether they're allowed to do it the first beyond Shabbos or not, so that also should depend on whether they know what they're doing. So there, again, most people know, and therefore they're allowed to do the first Bia on Shabbos. Now the Lord says that Rava Bar Hanan, Teta Abaye, so I have a question then. We have, we know that you have people who set up the bed for the couple the first night to make sure the sheets are clean in advance and then nobody's going to put blood there in advance to try to fool the other one. And we also put a sheet out that's clean to catch the blood so that we know that the blood is there. We take steps to make sure that you find the blood. But the guy could anyway do a beer without bleeding. So what's the point in all this? He could just do the beer and there won't be blood. So why we're we trying to catch the blood? Simmer says no. If he does the beer without bleeding, he's also going to leave her still a psula. He's not going to cause a rupture of the psula. And then if he comes and he claims, oh, you were an psula, she'll say, not only was I a psula, I still am. So then he won't have a timer there. The problem is that he's going to try to break the psula and lie and say there weren't any, hide the blood, and then say you were an psula before, so I don't owe you your ksuba and we're out of this marriage. That is what we need to prevent, and that's why you need to have to have the shoshvinin. You need to have the people who set up the bed and spread the sheet and make sure that everything is on the up and up. All right, now the Gemara tries to make another proof. The Gemara quotes of Ami, who says that you're allowed to pop a blister on Shabbos to squeeze out the fluid that's in there. So there, you're also removing uh, liquid. So that's a clear proof that you're allowed to do that. The Gemara is not necessarily proof. The blister, the liquid in the blister is really just a water balloon. It's not absorbed at all. Here, the psulim, even on this side that it's liquid form and it's held, it's still a little bit absorbed. So you're doing something. So there's still what to question. And the blister will not be approved. Even though the blister is allowed, this is a little bit worse because it's still absorbed and therefore it wouldn't have.